Good evening. I'm going to share some information with you, and it may make you feel uncomfortable. And because it makes people uncomfortable, nobody's talking about it. And therefore, nothing is being done. And that's the need for options for end-of-life support for children. There are 560,000 children in this country living with life-threatening illnesses. And tens of thousands of those children live here in Seattle. Victor was born with a bleeding disorder, and because of this, he spent more of his time in hospital rooms than in classrooms. He didn't learn how to ride a, ride a bike or how to play baseball. The friends he had were his doctors and nurses. Victor learned how to manage his pain and his IV treatments. And he was so sick that he had to be in the hospital because there were no options in the community. So the last eight months of his life, he spent in a hospital room. I was his night shift nurse, and that's where his final memories were made. Seattle offers great hospital care, but what it can't do is provide a home atmosphere. So children who are often in the hospitals for months and even years at a time are separated from their families. They lack quality of life. They don't get to just be a child. Ronald McDonald House is an amazing, is amazing resource for our community, but yet again, it's a place where the families go, lodged, where families are lodged, but where the children are still in the hospital. So again, they're separated. There's no medical support, and there's no services there. Ideally, everybody thinks they want to be at home, but it's not always possible. Home hospice is not the 24-7 care that you would imagine. Often, it's a nurse coming to visit you at your house, providing you with the medicine and the tools you need to do the hands-on care to take care of your child. Often, the children end up back in the hospital because simply without support, families are exhausted. I started doing some research, and I realized there had to be a better way, and the good news was I found one. In the UK, over 30 years ago, they built the first children's hospice. It was a home in the community where not only the child was cared for, but the entire family. And since then, they've built 53 more. This model has been duplicated around the world. There are eight in Canada, and the fifth one is being built in Australia. Yet here in the United States, we have two. Two. I've been a pediatric oncology nurse for over 32 years, and 30 of those years, I worked night shift at the bedside of these children. I was there when they brought in when they were first diagnosed, I was there when they relapsed, and I was there when they died. There is nothing more personal than being at the bedside with a family when their child is dying, and there is nothing more impersonal than doing it over medical rails. So I imagined a home in the community, driving down a beautiful driveway in Siddish to the hospital, and there it would be a 25,000 square foot home, there would be 12 family suites, each suite large enough for six family members. There would be a kennel in the back for the family pet. In the kitchen, meals would be, would be prepared for these families. They could be cared for and not just caregivers. It would be a place where they felt supported. And when the time need, it would be an option for them for end-of-life care. I knew I couldn't do it alone, so I reached out to the community, and the community reached back. We garnered over $600,000 in in-kind professional support last year. We have a team of over 40 amazing volunteers, leaders in our community, nurses, doctors, uh, lawyers, contractors, parents. This is a big undertaking, but it's not impossible. Seattle is already an innovator in leads in hospitals, businesses, universities, and local nonprofits. We have an opportunity now to set an example for the rest of the country and build these children's hospices and show that when a community works together, anything can be done. Seattle University has already partnered with us with their business school and school of nursing. This collaborative effort will prove to be a cost savings. There's a proven cost of over $4,000 a day and over $200 million a year. 
they are proven. It, we also have other nonprofits in our community that are similar, and they are sustained mainly with philanthropy and with community giving. I believe that um, our children deserve the same thing. Victor died, but if Ladybug House had existed, instead of spending time in the hospital, he would have had those sleepovers with his family. He would have had that time in the kitchen with his grandmother. His uncle's mariachi band may have played in the backyard of Ladybug House instead of at his funeral. I believe that if your child, grandchild, niece or nephew needed Ladybug House, you would want it to exist. There are over 3,000 adult hospices in this country, and we found over 400 for pets, and yet we have two for children. When medicine can no longer add days to the life of a child, Ladybug House will add life to their days. Thank you.